and in position the UK's the... Boris Johnson offered permanent residency visas to up to three million Hong Kong citizens. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison suspended an extradition agreement with Hong Kong and planned to extend visas for the territory's residents. Germany's government, on the other hand, is treading softly. Its response to Hong Kong's new security law is being criticized from different sides of the political spectrum. While expressing concern for China's influence in Hong Kong, Chancellor Angela Merkel repeatedly called for an open dialogue with China and reinforced the country's role as an important partner. But even members of Merkel's government coalition said her stance towards China needs to change. We need to consider China for what it actually is. It's a trade partner, it's an economic and technological competitor, but it is above all also a systemic competitor that has a completely different model of governance for the state and for society. And Merkel must incorporate these important factors into her China policy. The SPD, along with the opposition Greens and Free Democrats, is also calling for the government to make it easier for Hong Kong citizens to resettle in Germany. In 2018, two Hong Kong activists were granted asylum. The two young men, Ray Wong and Alan Lee, were facing charges of rioting at home. It was the first apparent case of Germany granting protection to Hong Kong pro-democracy campaigners. The Free Democratic Party is pushing for the government to make it easier for Hong Kongers to find refuge in Germany. We have called upon the federal government to examine to what extent we can facilitate entry and possibly also residence permits and even asylum. Merkel said no specific measures are planned to facilitate the relocation of Hong Kongers to Germany. But with the new security law in place, a growing number of people may want to leave Hong Kong, upping the pressure for the German government to take action. Uh, for more on this, let's cross over to DW's political correspondent, Kate Brady. Kate, why is Germany so reluctant to actually really confront China? Well, at the end of the day, this really comes down to trade and economics. The, so China is uh, indeed Germany's biggest trade partner. And we've seen, especially over the last 15 years, that Angela Merkel's been in office, those economic ties growing closer and closer. And for a long time, Germany's strategy, like many other uh, Western democracies as well, was this idea of Handel, uh, Vandal Deutsch Handel here in Germany, at least, which is the idea of tra uh, change through trade. There's so this idea that through improving economic ties and bringing economic ties closer together that, that Germany would be able to help coax uh, China's authoritarian uh, politics into a more free, open, democratic uh, Chinese state. And simply that isn't uh, the case right now. And we're seeing increasing calls here in Germany, as we saw there in the report as well, to simply change that strategy and take a tougher stance towards Beijing. Well, German President Frank Walter Steinmeier, Steinmeier has also addressed this issue in an interview on public television yesterday. Let's have a quick listen. What is important now is that we make clear to China this is no momentary state of indignation. If things stay as they are, it will have a lasting negative effect on ties with European Western states. China has no interest in that, so I still hope that there's a way to reverse China's thinking. Well, that's the tricky part, isn't it? How does one reverse China's way of thinking? Well, that certainly is the big question on the plates of those EU foreign ministers today. And Heiko Maas, the German foreign minister, said that he wants to see some quick progress on a coordinated uh, response from the EU hashed out even just in that meeting today. So there are several options on the table and in efforts to perhaps reverse that way of thinking. Uh, one popular option seems to be economic sanctions, of course, which comes with the risk of retaliatory measures. Uh, from Beijing as well. Um, another option for the EU could be to possibly take this issue even to the International uh, Court of Justice in The Hague or at the same time
And we could also see the EU perhaps adopting a so-called Magnitsky um, law, so which would then enable the EU to um, actually target, uh, or rather implement, targeted travel bans and, and asset freezes mm. on individuals uh, who are involved in, in human rights abuses. So we'll have to wait and see until uh, that meeting is over to see exactly what progress uh, those foreign ministers managed to make today. Well, the EU's reaction, uh, of course, is one thing, but are we likely to see a real change in the German position to this issue? At this point, I think we certainly are, but Germany is also very aware that it can't change its position on its own, which is why uh, the, the, the relations between EU and China is such an important issue while Germany currently holds uh, the presidency of the European Council. So this is going to be a huge issue over the next six months that Germany really wants to tackle uh, while it holds on to that presidency. Our political correspondent, Kate Brady there. Thank you.